What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV, and today we're gonna to be talking all about bear safety and wilderness safety when it comes to animals in wild country like where I am here in Wyoming. I'm about to set off on a backpacking trip, actually my first backpacking trip with my girlfriend in bear country. So together, our dog and I, we're gonna go backpacking in the Wind River Range and there are lots of bears out here. And a lot of you here on the YouTube channel are fairly concerned about bears, animal activity, how to stay safe with wild animals. And uh, so let's talk about that here today on Backpacking TV. You'll have to bear with me because I've got maybe one or two bear puns uh, in, the, in the register for you. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, so how do you stay safe in bear country? Well, there's definitely a few key rules when it comes to being safe in bear country. And that, a lot of it comes down to how you deal with your food and your scented items. And so scented items would be anything like toothpaste, uh, deodorant, uh, chapstick that's scented like cherry chapstick, anything like that you need to be aware of and, and treat it differently than you would in, a, say, a backpacking trip in the desert. Now, there are a lot of regulations that are out there about where what you can do and what you can bring, and here is one of them. So I actually am mandated to have a certain amount of bear protection with me today. So what does that look like? Well, it could be a bear canister. I'm gonna unveil it right now. My friends, this is the Ursac. Now, this is a Kevlar bear bag, uh, Kevlar being that bulletproof material uh, that uh, people use in law enforcement. I was just at a gear shop in Lander, Wyoming, and was checking in with them, which I often do uh, when it comes to backpacking in new terrain, to see what was gonna, you know, what it's gonna be like to be backpacking out here, and to talk about uh, getting a bear can, since I don't own one, and I didn't really wanna travel with one. Uh, but this is actually what I think could be a really good solution for not having to backpack with the bear canister. So we'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, this is obviously compressible. That being one of the biggest differences uh, between this and a bear canister. Bear canisters are literally a huge tub that is solid plastic, durable, rigid plastic that a bear can't crush. And they're smooth and bears, all they can do is kind of bat them around. Uh, but there's no way to get inside of them. The downside of them is that uh, they're the same size and weight uh, if you're on day one or day seven, um, it doesn't really matter. With a bear canister, it doesn't matter. It's always the same size and it always takes up a massive amount of your backpack, which for me is a big pain in the butt. I hate backpacking with them, but they are necessary until I came across this. So this is my first time ever backpacking with it. I don't know how great it's gonna be. Maybe it's going to totally blow, but uh, I'll let you know. Um, but the idea behind this is that it's tear resistant. You can hang this up in a tree, and even if a bear were to get at it, its uh, big claws are not going to be able to slice your bag open and get at your food. Now, there are some downsides and drawbacks to this bag is that it's not hard-sided. So if a, ba if a bear were to be able to get this on the ground, it could just stomp away, crush, and kind of destroy your food. Now, it probably wouldn't be able to get it out of the bag, so it'd still be there, but it might just be your stuff is kind of in tatters. Um, so, you know, there, there are some downsides to that, but I think that this is really promising. The other downside to this is that this was $100. So that is a bit pricier than a bear can, but uh, I guess that is, you know, the price of innovation and uh, Kevlar materials, you know, bulletproof vest kind of stuff going on in backpacking. The bag weighs in at 8.8 .8 ounces, which is actually quite a bit of weight savings over the bear canister. Uh, those things are littler, literally probably one to two pounds. Um, so this, this has got some promise. So, but uh, one more thing that I want to talk about before we just talk about the gear is that my girlfriend is going to be backpacking with us here today. Uh, I'm going to be backpacking with my girlfriend here today. My girlfriend has never been backpacking in bear country before. She has one or two concerns, so I'm going to invite my special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen Christy before a couple of times. We've gone backpacking in Utah together. Uh, that was her very first backpacking trip. This is Kovu. He will also be backpacking with us. So backpacking with a dog uh, in bear country, we will also be mindful 
of of him and his safety. Yeah, he actually is probably one of my biggest concerns. But yeah, so backpacking in bear country is is really just about taking a few precautions and then translating that from what you already do with backpacking and then just add in a few new layers. And in general, 99.999% uh, of the time, that means you're gonna be perfectly safe. Uh, the bears are gonna be safe, you are gonna be safe, your animals are gonna be safe. So adding in a few of those safety layers is really gonna be all you kinda need to do. So we're gonna talk about those. Kovu, leave the chipmunk alone. Um, but yeah, so we just came across a story of a, a woman who got pulled out of her tent mm -hmm. um, and was killed yeah. uh, backpacking. And while I don't know the details of the story, I can guess what she did wrong. And in all likelihood, she brought food or scented items with her into the tent. And therefore the, the bear, as it's just foraging around and smells something nice, uh, goes its way, thinks, you know, a tent is very uh, minimal protection, nothing more than what a, a bush would do. So he's just wandering through a bush and all of a sudden there's something screaming at him uh, ab about, uh, you know, hey, get out of my tent, which rightfully so, I understand the woman uh, mm -hmm. reaction there. But in all likelihood, very much startled the bear and then this, the startling of the bear is often what leads to an That's attack. Right. They're, yeah. they're not actually uh, trying to eat human flesh uh, and in general cases, they're just not interested in humans at all. It's either if they're protecting their young or if you really scare them, then they are gonna defend themselves. Um, so the, the biggest mistake that she probably made was uh, in all likelihood was just bringing scented items into, into her tent. Now, uh, a misconception can be that that's just food and that actually could be uh, lipstick, perfume, um, anything like that, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all of those things need to go into a bear bag or a bear can that you're putting 200 feet away from camp uh, and hanging up into a tree so that it's inaccessible from a bear. Yeah, so uh, I, I think that backpacking with a dog in, in bear country does add a layer of concern. However, I think in general, it's perfectly safe to go backpacking with a dog in bear country. Now that does uh, lead to, when we're on the trail, we will most likely be actually backpacking with Kovu on a leash mm -hmm. uh, so that he doesn't bolt off after a bear um, because we're gonna be able to really manage Kovu. Uh, he's not gonna see something and go uh, chase it, after, and yeah. which could put him in danger or the bear in danger mm -hmm. uh, and potentially other people in danger as, as well. Um, so we will be backpacking with him on the leash. Um, for the most part, there might be a few cases where we can kind of judge and it seems safe and it seems like there's plenty or of open there's terrain. There's a lot of rock scrambling yeah, or something. Yeah, and maybe Kobo yeah. needs to be off leash, then we can let him off leash. Um, but the other thing would be like, should we tie him up at night? Um, so one, we do have a backpacking tent that's big enough for him to actually sleep inside of. So he's not gonna yeah. just be free ranging all over the wilderness at night. So he will be with us. Uh, and that will be one major thing. But yeah. two, if you don't have a tent that that's, that's big enough for him, I would say it, it can be tricky trying to be like, I'm gonna keep him on his, on his leash tied up to a tree because what that can mean is that he doesn't have the ability to protect himself or to mm -hmm. escape if a mountain lion or a bear comes up. He's basically like one of those goats in Jurassic Park that is chained to a fence and can't go anywhere and is defenseless. So we obviously don't want to do that yeah. either. It was also more about, for us, because he can't come in the tent with us, it's more about when we're making dinner and we're just hanging out around camp. Like yeah. what, because we usually, when we're just hanging out at camp, Kobo just hangs out. But yeah, that, that makes so much sense. He can't get away if if he is tied up. So we will continue this video actually on the trail, um, but I did want to just, yeah, go over kind of what we're, what we're prefacing with and, and to, to talk about some of our bear safety uh, things that we're doing beforehand, which also includes, we will be backpacking with bear spray. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you should be absolutely be backpacking with, with a can of bear spray on you. And on you. On you. On and one hip. of the big mistakes <laughs> that people make is that they buy it, then they never even take it out of the plastic packaging and they just bury it in their backpack. And if they ever need it, then they need to undo everything in their backpack, open up packaging, ask the bear to politely please Whoa. halt and uh, wait to give them an opportunity to uh, get the bear spray ready. Uh, so uh, I always backpack with it on my hip. 
Uh, you can put it on your backpack, uh, somewhere accessible that you can actually just grab uh, and, and, you know, deploy it uh, immediately if, if you need to. Now, when should you deploy it? Uh, if you feel dramatically unsafe, that would be a good time to deploy it. But if you just see a bear Don't. Uh, on somewhere out there, you do not need to all of a sudden start spraying bear spray what? all over and create a cloud around you. You'll probably just get what? the stuff in your face. Um, so it's, and then start all the bear, and, and then, then the bear will be like, hey, whoa. And then you've just used your bear spray. So, uh, yeah, it's a limited supply. So don't use it if you just see a bear over there that's unconcerned with you. Let's see. Last things. People get really nervous about sleeping in bear country because they think that what happened to this woman is going to happen to them all the time. That is, it's in, just from a information standpoint, I get the fear but it happens so, so rarely that uh, you're far more likely to have an accident on the way to the trailhead. And it's just not something that, if you do these steps, it's not something that I concern myself with. I sleep soundly in bear country um, and don't have to just fear every little noise in the woods that it's something that it's my impending doom or anything like that. <laughs> That's something I'm gonna have to get used to. If I hear a noise, I'm gonna be like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. And that's all right. That we're we're going to work through time. this together. Yeah. It often is just about familiarity with the wilderness. And a lot of you guys here uh, are on the newer side of backpacking. Um, so it can be nerve wracking to go backpacking in bear country. That being said, I think it's time to pack up and get out and get after it. You ready? Here's our no bears encounter dance. Mm. Actually, I'd like to see one at, the sa at yeah, a safe distance. Yeah, but a safe distance. Safe distance. Like at least 50 feet, preferably more. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Just want to look at them in my binoculars. <laughs> That's the way to enjoy bear country. Boom. Well, I was just scouting for a good place to hang our food to uh, be safe from the grizzlies. I think uh, there's some trees down that way that kind of stick out because uh, we're up high. So there's actually not very many tall trees. Um, so we're going to go for that. The stipulations here in Wind River Range are 10 feet off the ground, four feet away from a tree or something that they could just climb. Uh, so it kind of has to be hanging in free space. Uh, that's one of the main important parts of bear safety out here. And uh, also, leave your food away from camp, of course. Uh, and I'm not, there's other people camping out here. I don't want to accidentally go hang it at somebody else's camp. So that would be a no-no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, scout your places, uh, preferably with light. Uh, it's much harder to do in the dark. So I've been scouting trees and, uh, this one actually is pretty nice that it act leans out over this cliff face. Cause the idea is that I got to find a way to hang the bear bag 10 feet off the ground and four feet away from a rock wall, a tree that it can climb something else. So, uh, I, I lashed part of the end of this around that rock so I can actually throw it up and over. I successfully got it over part of the tree that's hopefully semi-sturdy. <laughs> uh, and then I've got my Kevlar bear bag that I'm trying out. We'll see how it does hanging up in that tree now. So far, I'm actually really impressed with this uh, Kevlar bag. I think it's really cool. Now, hopefully I don't actually, actually get to test it and no bears uh, come around and try to swipe at it. You know, I won't be testing to see how many swipes it can withstand. Uh, but I feel good about where the bear bag is hung. Uh, it shouldn't be in, around anybody else that's around here too. There's a couple other campers. And as long as the bear is not smart enough to cut my rope, uh, I'll have food in the morning. I definitely do understand people's fears it can be a scary thing. I mean, I know that my mind was heightened uh, last night as I was trying to sleep, uh, just thinking through the noises that were out there. Um, but yeah, at the same time, just some of it comes from familiarity, just being out in these zones and actually doing it and uh, recognizing the potential dangers and feeling the more you do it, the more comfortable you feel with it. And it doesn't have to become this big, scary thing. So one thing I wanna add in to clarify is that all of this food safety and bear spray and all of this stuff is, is about more than just not getting mauled and not getting attacked by a bear. 
um, hanging our food up and doing these things, not eating, not leaving food in our tent. Uh, it's, it's, it's multiple layers. Uh, but one of the main things is really just not losing your food. Um, I think that that is, is definitely one of the main things. Nobody wants to be 30 miles deep in the back country and have a bear get into their food and then they're wiped out and they have no nutrition for the rest of their one day, three days, whatever it might be. Um, so that can be a really dangerous situation. Um, so we do just want to do all these things to make sure that the bears are safe, that these critters are safe, uh, not developing bad habits, not getting into human food when they shouldn't be, and just making this place uh, safe for hikers, safe for bears, safe for all these animals to enjoy for a long time in the future. So that's like a big, big part of bear safety is not just not getting mauled, but how to make it's safe for, for everyone and keeping the bears and the animals wild and, you know, doing their thing well and healthily. So last few thoughts on this bear bag. Um, I really, really like it. And uh, I think it's going to be part of my new protocol for backpacking in uh, bear country for sure. And I might, it's light enough. It's eight point, it's eight ounces. So it's half a pound. Uh, that it could be really handy just with like rodents and critters and canyon country and other places that I like to go backpacking. So I will use this in the future. I think it was well worth the hundred bucks that just being able to save that space in my backpack is really, really awesome. And I love that. And uh, if you see where we actually hung our, our food last night, we just got really lucky with this situation. Obviously it's only four feet off the ground right now. Uh, it's just for demonstration purposes. And I was just eating out of it. But there's this tree that's hanging out over a cliff and I could throw a rock uh, that I tied the rope around up and over the tree and just created that nice pulley. And then uh, it's coming down uh, this line and I've tied it off to the side. I wouldn't really want to tie it directly below because then the bears, if they're aware of the food, they might come right below the food, try to look at it. And it'd be easier for them to just swipe that cord or the rope and uh, get at them themselves. So those are a few of my tips. And uh, again, just making sure that you are about 200 feet away from camp. If it's, if it's heavy activity, I also will not cook at my tent site. And I'll just make sure that I don't snack and eat at my tent site as those are easy ways to leave crumbs and food signatures around that the bears are going to come looking for. Um, but yeah, Absolutely. Go backpacking in bear country. I mean, look, they, they choose great homes. So uh, make yourself uh, put yourself out there a little bit. And I think you'll really, really enjoy it. OK, that's it for me. Um, I'm going to be signing off on this bear video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, leave it in the section below. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I'm going to go wrap up the rest of my time here in Wyoming. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.